Greetings, or what is up, and a very warm welcome to the channel. The sun is shining, and the magpie is very glad to be casting. Coming at you once again with a live one versus one battle, featuring this time spawning in the south, playing as the Vermac forces. It is going to be China, Kanji, Kanji, Kanji. One of those I actually do recognise. This one here is Naku, which means in the middle. Uh, although based on the fact that his name is China, and those, those Kanji uh, have no have no um, kana, this is this is definitely Chinese, not Japanese. So. I, I still cannot read this. One of these days we're going to get a Chinese and or Japanese and or kanji based name that I can read, but uh, today is not that day. Um, and spawning in the north playing as the Soviet forces, it is going to be Nateno. Now, uh, neither of these two players have featured on the channel before, uh, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they can offer. They were the top rated game on the lobby and I thought a little bit of Vermac versus Soviets, a little bit old school, a little bit groovy would be nice to cast. Especially on Fame and Villa approach, where uh, you know lots of things can happen and the game can go late. So uh, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing what this game can offer. Now, whilst these two players do get their initial fights underway here and vie for map position, which I'll try to cover on the camera, I'll just uh, take a moment right here to say, uh, yeah, of course there haven't been many uploads for over a week. Wow, shocking! But it is that time of year. I've been away from my home. I've been uh, travelling around, visiting family, having good times, and enjoying the festive time of year. Um, so. <clears throat> It's good to be back, um, but uh, yeah, that, that's why I haven't been uploading many videos or anything like that. But I am now back, and uh, hopefully I will be uh, casting some stuff, like more stuff. I wish I... <laughs> I should be more organised, but I haven't even got around to thinking about what stuff yet. But uh, yeah, there's going to be more casting. Magpie is back in the nest. Uh, the Christmas fest drawing to an end. So um, yeah, just... um. Just, uh, just, just relax. Just be chill. There's loads more magpie coming at you. Um, I've got like artifact cut number 16 to cast. Uh, still, I have those files, so uh, we could have a look at that. Which actually is going to be especially amusing because that was the one I actually played in. Um, and uh, yeah, goodness knows, I've probably got like tons of other stuff. And I'm sure I can, I sure I can get involved. There's probably going to be some live events coming. It'll be really cool to cast another Starcraft uh, uh, Go for SC2 Cup. Like, um, so anyway, although I don't have the specifics, I'm just saying there's there's going to be some magpie coming at you. Oh my goodness, these Grenadiers leaving it a tad late to fall back here. The Conscripts probably aren't going to get the squad wipe, not known for their accuracy, particularly at Veteran C0. So, uh, those Grenadiers going to escape for now. <clears throat> Pardon me, looks like uh, China right now going for a reasonably balanced roster. Two Grenadiers and MG42, and he's now going into a GR34 mortar. Uh, looks like for Natano, it's going to be mostly Conscripts right now. Let's take a look at these upgrades. So he has Medics right now. No choice of a tech building. Has he got Lend Lease on the roster? Okay, there is no Lend Lease on the roster, so I anticipate we'll see a tech building soonish. Looks like he's just leaving his options open on that one. Perhaps wants to know exactly how China is planning on playing out this early game. Before he commits himself to a support weapon camp and IR or a special rifle plant. Um, but these pioneers actually kind of heroing out for as much damage as they can at this range, but they will have to give way. Uh, actually, no, you know what? Reinforcing Grenadiers may change the uh, may change the dynamics of this equation just a little bit, as uh, the conscripts forced to take cover in this building. But now they're at such a range that they won't really be doing much damage to uh, to these Axis units, especially if they are in cover. Um, that GR34 gonna make itself known here. Where is it firing from? Okay, it's firing from a reasonably defensible position. This is. Absolutely fine. Looks like a tech choice has come down for the Soviet player, and as you can see, it is going to be the support weapon Campanile, uh, which I'm very glad to see, of course, because uh, you know those of you who have watched my recent games involving Soviet players, I am on a bit of a sort of anti-rifle uh, command um, kind of I don't know spree at the moment. I think if you go rifle command, it's still fine, it's still viable, but you can't do it without the support weapon Campanile. Like every time I've seen Soviet players do it, so Soviet players do that recently. It just seems way too fragile. I think you need the ability to go for ZIS guns, especially but also the Maxim is very useful and the Mortar has its place. So uh, I really like the Support Weapon Company. I find it hard to envisage how Soviet players survive without it very effectively and I haven't seen a Soviet player do it for some time. So anyway, that, that, that kind of concludes my thoughts on that. Looks like the Soviet player is indeed actually going to reach for a Mortar as his first unit out of that building, which is unexpected to be honest. I was expecting a Maxim here for sure, but it uh, looks like that's not going to be the choice here. Uh, and I don't mind the Mortar pick, obviously it does enable you to sort of counter the Axis Mortar and apply pressure to the small Axis squad, so Mortar a little bit more um, flinchy, I guess, flinch worthy. I mean, if you're an Axis player, specifically if you're a Vermac player, hearing that Mortar shell raining in when, when you've got loads of expensive, precious, little fragile four-man squads, that, that does raise the pulse a bit, you definitely do feel it, you definitely do kind of think like, oh my god, where is it going to land? You know, you scrabble around trying to find that one exposed squad or the one clustered squad where it's going to hit. Um, so, uh, yeah, I do like the Mortar. Um, also in a Mortar War, of course, the Soviet one has six men, the Axis one has just four men, so that positions it quite well in a straightforward Mortoff. Um, <clears throat> let's see now. 
Looks like we've got a uh, fairly respectful game so far. The scoreline, you know, uh, a quick 50 ticket lead for the Axis player here, though. Um, Although Natanio here is going to be ca capturing, you know, uh, the West and East VPs here, so he will be capturing, uh, ca capturing, catching up in that regard, or capturing up in that regard, still seems equally appropriate actually. Soviet player mixing a mortar into his lineup now. Sorry, mortar mixing in a maxim into his lineup. My goodness, my player, you take a break from casting for seven days and just suddenly lose everything. Um, that's how it feels right now. <laughs> but we'll be good. We'll be good. Looks like we've got a commander pick here from uh, China Kanji, and uh, I do like this commander pick. This is one that I almost always roll with on my roster, even though I would say that Spearhead is one of the least transformative commanders, as in he doesn't open up very more, very very many doors for the uh, Vermac player. He doesn't enable you to do much of, to do anything new, really. He just lets you play the Vermac game, the default Vermac plan, uh, much more smoothly and much more efficiently. And to that end, we do see a Mortar Half-Track coming out onto the field now, which I do like, especially paired up with an existing GR-34. That is going to give China Kanji here some, uh, some pretty heavy uh, Mortar Supremacy here. Bear in mind, of course, for, what is it, 45 munitions? Yeah. You can throw down the incendiary mortar barrage off of this thing, and that incendiary mortar barrage is very useful if you use it at the right time and you remember that you have it. So I do like this pick. Um, I think that the, uh, the mortar half track can be really useful, and I even think that this commander is actually a really good one. Uh, I just don't think it's one that you're likely to see at the top end of the play, because, as I say, it doesn't really offer you very many new options. It just lets you do the Vermac thing a little bit better. But, uh, anyway. This Maxim crew here, like, duking and jiving with mortars here, baiting a squad wipe, but they are going to fall back and they will be just fine. This, uh, this Mortar Half-Track already with three kills on it. Bloody hell. That rate of fire, that damage beginning to kick in. That's a rifle grenade. So, oh, Natanio paying great attention there. Still has to fall the squad back, but at least it doesn't, you know, stand a risk of getting wiped. And, uh... <coughs> These two players seemingly very, seemingly very well met here, uh, exchanging fire back and forth. Uh, it's hard to pick a winner. No, nobody's dropped the ball just yet. I haven't seen any obvious mistakes. No squad wipes. These two guys definitely settling in for a nice battle in earnest here, and that is exactly what I signed up to cast. So that's fantastic news. These mortars are doing a fantastic job. The rate of fire off of a GR-34 and the mortar half-track is intimidating. Looks like China here, ever wary of the potential for a T-70, has his timings quite straight, quite down here. This this gun, sorry, this uh, uh, pack gun going to be arriving just in the nick of time to uh, preemptively ward off uh, any early T-70 which could be coming. Now, there is the fuel for a T-70, there is the building. We do have the uh, support armor core, sorry, the tank of E battalion command coming up just now. So uh, that T-70 could be on the roster very soon, and I hope that uh, I do hope that China does not reveal the uh, the pack gun here um, earlier than he has to. Uh, I, if he if he can bait the Soviet player into getting a T-70, that'll be fantastic here. If he reveals the pack gun, well, that might not happen. Anyway, conscript here do, are coming in. No anti tank. Uh, no anti-tank grenade, though, has been researched, so the mortar half-track was not even in jeopardy. You have to respect it, though, if you're China, so he's going to retreat that now, just fall it back down to down to this location here. Oh, these, so, these uh, units are actually very clustered. That mortar gets a straight shot here. Okay, it's going to be okay for now, but this represents a fantastic mortaring opportunity, for sure. And, uh, you know, field control beginning to turn pretty blue again. Looks like west back in Axis hands, east heading that way. Conscript's going to come across to try and deny that. And uh, mid, is a mid, mid is actually being captured by some uh, engineers, but uh, China here doing everything he can to uh, grab the field and uh, stress and tax his opponent. Pulling him in many different locations as well, which is really nice. Uh, we've got some pioneers pushing over here in the far east. Um, so that's looking just fine. It's on the Soviet player right now to respond. It is definitely, I would say, China who's setting the, mo setting the pace of this game. Even has an MG42 to uh, deflect the one uh, potentially unanswered aggressive unit for Natanio here. So this is very nice. Yeah, that's going to force those uh, conscripts back. Nothing they can achieve under the watchful eye of uh, the good old 42 there. Some advances are being made for the Soviet player, though. Definitely the West uh, turning red on the minimap. He's going to grab fuel. He's grabbed VP. He's going to grab maybe a couple of other points. And in fact, there aren't really any Axis units in place to deal with this. There is a mortar half-track, but that's not really going to be enough to push back those three squads. Merely uh, perhaps damage them and maybe slow them down a little bit. But, uh, China Kanji here is going to want to assign some more forces down there, and he's going to mix in some uh, Panzer Grenadiers into the roster here, which I do like a lot. I mean, it builds on a solid foundation of units for him. Now, here comes that T-70, so it looks like that was the pick for the Soviet player. Immediately forces back an MG-42 and a uh, squad of uh, engineers. The MG-42 not falling back, actually. Uh, and that will almost certainly be a squad wipe. The, the fallback here possibly just a bit late. He's going to 
going to have an attempt to run here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Pat Gun does get set up here. Wow, somehow the MG42 actually gets out of there. Pat Gun takes a shot. So, uh, Natanio, if he wasn't cognizant of that unit already, he is now. Was a miss, so the T70 is going to be available for uh, additional operations here momentarily. Mortar gets cluster grenade though. Burn! That will be a squad wipe there. This Panzer Grenadier is able to find their mark and deliver some deadly damage. Now, it's not the end of the world for the Soviet player. He can recruit that unit, but it is inconvenient. That's going to take two squads off the front line for a little... A little bit of time here, as well as wiping the veterancy on that unit. So a nice pickup here from China, and definitely worth the 45 munitions that he had to lob in there in the form of that bundle grenade. Very nicely played there. So take a sip here on my team. Well, we've got a moment of quiet here, so I'm going to talk about something not strictly game-related for a second, but I've completely moved around my whole computer and setup, so my desk is now at a completely different configuration, my microphone is in a different place, it's coming at me from a different angle, um, everything seems to be going fine so far, and I'm quite liking the new setup, but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. For those of you at home, I am working in a slightly unfamiliar environment. I mean, it's still my desk, it's still my computer and everything, but uh, yeah, I've rejigged it. Hopefully it's going to be better this way. Time to tell, I'm still kind of undecided. Anyway, looks like the Axis player going to try and move on out of his base here, taking a pretty big fight on his doorstep. The Soviet player looks like Natanya here, going to respect this push, pulls back his units uh, in front of that pretty much immediately. Pack gun even finds the angle that the T-70 comes in on. That will repulse the light tank here. I think... I think once that's happened, I like repositioning the uh, pack gun to maybe here, because that way you can help support mid as well as probably watch the right flank. Looks like Mortar Half Trek also going to transition away from west. And uh, China needs to get some work done here. Uh, the Soviet player is caught right up in uh, victory points, and I like the Soviet player's map control a little bit better. Uh, he's going to grab uh, fuel, he's going to grab muni in there. The, the, I mean, he's had a fuel and a muni um, for a long time. There's been no Axis units over here in the west of the map. So. Uh, China here, I think, actually, with some work to do. The advances of Nisanyo actually uh, have been quite successful here. T-70 is going to get stuck in. Axis wave going to come forward here. Maxim in a nice position is going to suppress these uh, grenadiers. Looks like the Panzer... Sorry, the Panzer Grenadier yeah, going to get the bundle grenade onto the Maxim. Boom. <laughs> Grimy damage. These uh, pioneers going to flirt with death here to try and uh, pick off this Maxim, and that is a totally worthy prize. Reinforce comes down there at the crucial timing, though. And uh, did that sacrifice a squad of conscripts to reinforce that? I feel like it did. So I think that is technically a squad wipe. Um, oh, wow, that sucks if you're the Soviet player. I thought for sure it would always leave a man if he was reinforced with conscripts like that. That's one I'd like to watch back again. But I'm pretty sure he did lose a squad reinforcing that, because I saw no low, I saw no low, low headcount. Uh, Conscript squad. Well, anyway, he's going to e equalize that straight away. Grenadiers do get gibbed here. And Sendry on the MG42 is going to put this T70 on the back foot for now. Very nicely done. It also should hoon into these conscripts. I don't know why that MG42 is actually firing right now. There it is. Uh, so that's some nice work. Looks like over here towards the west. Uh, what is this? There's a thing here. What is it? Oh, it's a... Oh, it's that a demo charge? Dun, dun, dun. All right, well, sneaky demo charge here. There is no metal detector on the Axis roster, so I can only assume at some point that is going to spell dire news for China here. But uh, we'll have to see. Um, but he's going to have to be super careful to avoid that. Oh, my God, and he has no idea it's there as well. Look at these conscripts, like, desperately try... Look, why don't you rush at us with your STGs, which are definitely better at close range? Yes. Oh, now they're going to fall back. Nothing can go wrong with this, right? Good. Whoa, I'll tell you what could go wrong though. They could get gunned down. There is actually no help on these conscripts. Oh, there's a turbo horrible uh, fallback there for the Soviet player. Gets gunned down to a man. Loses another squad. And now Natanio is in a terrible position because he's down to like four squads, but he's floating 860 odd manpower. I mean, what are you doing, good sir? You're well past the point where you could have chosen a commander who gives you guards. I don't know, like the guard motor coordination tactic. So if you're stacking manpower, it ain't for that. He puts another conscript squad onto the uh, queue here, but can't help but feel the macro, if you like, for. For as much as such a concept exists in the Company of Heroes 2, very weak here from Natanio. I mean, you never want to be floating that much. Okay, he's going to throw it into a marksman squad, and this is interesting. I mean, this is a this is an atypical play. This, to me, represents a roll of the dice. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how much value Natanio is going to be able to secure here out of these marksmen. Cal uh, the T-70 here fighting nicely, supported by conscripts. These grenadiers taking an awful risk coming this far forward. He is going to get the Faust, but that's now a two-star T-70. These uh, grenadiers quite wounded, and I would rather not risk the Grenadiers. I mean, he does get the Faust off, but I can't... I, I would have thought that that's just going to get repaired. Yeah, there we go. I mean, the, the vehicle crew repair comes down super fast. Um, but anyway, yeah, so Natanya... Okay, so he's, he's also grabbed a Zis gun, so he has spent his manpower bank. 
Uh, so now let's see if he can take a second bite at the cherry. The trouble is though, if you look at the top left, look at the top right. I mean, we got two pack guns, mortar, MG42, pioneers, grenadiers, two Panzer grenadiers, and you know, I think that just stacks up really well against these forces in the top right. I mean, two conscripts, and then here's marksman, maxim, uh, Soviet mortar, and uh, what is it? The PM81? Yeah, PM41. Goddamn. Uh, and the Zis gun. Um, and a T-70. I don't know, I think I kind of like the army in the top left. I mean, like, the T-70 is a nice thing to have, and it's done well at two stars, but I think the two pack guns has it pretty well controlled here. Um, and uh, I don't think the two conscripts and a Maxim really holds up against, like, Grenadiers, double Panzer Grenz, uh, with double mortar support. You know, I don't, I think, as the Soviet player, I, I, I think you'll have a hard time taking, uh, taking a big engagement here, and that kind of relegates you to the, uh, more guerrilla tactics, uh, you know, multiple angles of attack, push and poke, pull back, rapidly kind of style. And it does have a T-70 to facilitate that, but uh, I don't know. We're going to have to see. Looks like the Axis player as well, uh, China Kanji, going to mount a fresh wave of aggression over in the west of the map. Panzer Grands, Pioneers, MG42, going to get set up there and start eating in some ground. No Soviet units there to respond right now, so for now at least uh, all going well in the uh, in the west there for, the, uh, for China Kanji. Looks like the uh, PM41 going to be taken or trying to take some bites out of these Panzergrens. Now, these Panzergrens are actually quite clustered, so <coughs> may want to just spread them out. Yeah, there we go. He's going to choose a different place to stand. T70 rolling into the hood. And that's the nice thing about this style. Having T70 does allow you to respond quickly when your opponent pushes in an area where you have no forces. The T70, of course, ever good at policing infantry. But it's not enough, I feel. It's not enough. And I really feel like the uh, German player, if he wanted to, could be taking an advantage. The scoreline as near as makes no difference even, though. And I do feel like this game is, you know, probably no more than 60-40. Maybe even 55-45 right now. So very even game. These two players, as I said before, well met. A second marksman squad actually going to get mixed into the uh, roster here for Natanio. The initial marksman squad, they're up to two kills now, so not super impressive. But going for a second marksman squad, I can actually kind of dig this. Against Vermac, this is kind of horrible. Especially against a Vermac player who's using two Panzer Grenadier squads. You know, those marksmen are very good where Panzer Grenadier is concerned. I mean, they're very good where all Axis units are concerned. Especially, I mean, with two marksmen as well, you can kill any Vermac squad in effectively two shot delays. One shot delay if you uh, get the uh, initial kind of ambush shot. So basically, what I'm saying is, I don't know, these marksmen do get more effective with two squads, but they are super fragile and they are very susceptible to the same counters. So this is potentially risky here for the Soviet player. These Panzergrenz just staying to trade. This is risky, man. There's marksmen out there, which you do know about. This is so risky. The marksmen are in the hood. Oh, they were lining up the shot, but it did not come through. I wonder if China realizes just how close he was to losing that squad. Oh, well, he does get to keep them for now. Uh, GR34 as well actually drawing fire from these engineers, uh, which is kind of annoying. And I kind of feel like China is just falling into disarray a little bit here. He's just got straggling units all over the field, like this one pioneer here, um, who is the only support for an otherwise exposed pack gun over in the west. No, I take that back, sorry. There is a, <gasps> pardon me, an MG42 in the building. So that's actually probably fine here. Um, but yeah, I feel like China here, just a little bit uh, kind of scrambling to try and get something done here. A lot of his units right now at home... There's only two, actually. I thought a lot of his units were at home reinforcing, but I don't know. They're not really. Oh, God. These Panzergrenz, I assume, getting picked down by snipers here. How many? Five kills on one squad, one on the other. Star of Veterancy going to be appearing soon for these uh, scout snipers. Man, that's just incredibly fast how quickly they rank up, isn't it? Like, if you were sniping with a... You know, a Vermac marksman, I feel like there's no infantry who could rank up after six headshots. Are there any infantry you can rank up after six headshots? But Panzer Grenadiers, because they're so expensive, you know, you can really crack in that veterancy. So anyway, here comes the commander pick for the Soviet player. Uh, looks like we're going to be seeing the... Um, oh, got it. Why can't I remember his name? It's the guy who gets from Mother Russia and the uh, Stalin's hammer. He also gets access to the dubious KV-1, so that would be the seat pulled in here. Every time I say it's dubious, though, it goes on to do really well, so... I don't know. Maybe Natanio knows something I don't hear. Oh, come on. Uh, what is this guy called? All right, I'm just going to have to look. Counter-attack tactics. Well, there we go. Ugh. Couldn't remember that, but... Uh, anyway, yeah, so he also has shock troops. Doubt we're probably going to see those. It seems unlikely at the moment. Anyway, uh, we've also got, you know, the recon overflight and the form of the rusher ability, which we do see used now, so these conscripts kind of on a bit of a stim now. And as I recall, I think the video... They removed the drawback on some other Russia, so it just gives you a minute of uh, nicely buffed conscripts here. Oh, opportunity for a wipe here, though. The Grenadiers are going to get some shots here. Oh, and they do find him! Oh, and I feel, uh, I feel a little sorry for Natanio here. I don't think that 
I mean, that there was a risk of a squad wipe here, and whenever there's a risk of a squad wipe, it could always translate and punish you, but I think that, that was a reasonably small risk. But uh, those Grenadiers with the KR-98Ks, able to find the target nicely there. Now, there's a pack gun and two Shreks hosing into the front of this TV one Content at the moment to just take it, actually make that two packs, which means that these Shreks could be lethal. No, the Soviet Heavy. Oh, I thought it was going to escape, but one more shot from this anti-tank gun. Gonna pierce the front armor, and that is a loss of a KV-1 there for Natanio. And let's face it, that KV-1, not efficient at all. Pretty much just rolled out and died. And that is never what you want to do. I mean, I don't know why it was just taking a fight in mid against, like, three AT units. That was kind of dire here. So it's fair to say, I think, Natanio making the first big mistake of the game there. And that could be very impactful. I mean, KV-1s, they, they don't look that good, but they sure cost a lot of money. And they're, they're, they are 145 of your finest premium fuel here. Now, what, what, what tech does Natanio have here? Okay, so he has actually, obviously he's back tech to the Special Rifle Command because that's how we got the, uh, the Marksman, but he doesn't have his uh, mechanized regiment Campanaya, or his mechanized Campanaya, or whatever it's called. So, I mean, I would like him, I would have preferred him to go for that and maybe get a Katusha because they're so dominant on a map like this. Anyway, T-70 also gets found by the pack gun converted by these Panzer Grenadiers who are becoming absolute Gs with the Shreks. They're getting a lot of veterancy up. Meanwhile, in the west, it looks like some uh, engineers going to be repulsed by the MG-42 still garrisoning this building. And right now, China Kanji doing a good job of looking in control of this game, I suppose. Uh, if you look at the map, he does hold the two VPs. He's slightly ahead on score, although it's still very even. Here comes another wave of Panzer Grenadiers. That's going to be another conscript wipe. Yeah, there we go. And the Soviet player is just kind of hemorrhaging squads, which you can never afford to do. And uh, this is going to be a really hard game for him, I feel. Maxim, though, is in a nice position. That is going to catch a lot of elite infantry in the arc. Where are the marksmen, though? Okay, the marksmen are actually chipping in here as well, which means that these Panzer Grands for sure could get wiped here by the next two marksmen rounds. That would be a pricey loss for the German player. Why are these marksmen just not taking the shots? I think they should, for sure should just be taking the shots here. Here comes two comes. Oh, okay, they're not going to find that Panzergren. But this is expensive. Feeding plans at Panzergrenadiers into a double marksman grinder. Ugh, that's so expensive, not to mention risky. Uh, it looks like the incendiary barrage, by the way, was called in here off of the mortar half-track to displace the maxim out of this building. That mortar half-track, by the way, up to 13 kills, two stars of veterancy. Not doing too badly for itself. Another KV-1 going to be called in here for Natanya. And, um, I mean, he clearly is a man who likes himself a KV-1. I can't say I necessarily agree with this choice, but I, I hope I hope it does better than his last one for the sake of a, a close game here. I think if this KV-1 goes down for now, this game is as good as over. By the way, China just stacking fuel. Clearly a Tiger man here. Uh, the Tiger is available, so he can pull that in as soon as he gets the 640 manpower. And just a Tiger tank just totally outclasses a KV-1. I mean, it's just, it's just gross. So. So if that's the end game that we end up here... Oh, wow, the, uh, the uh, incendiary rounds get used on the MG-42. A lick of fire does find these snipers here. Kills one of them. Now Panzergren's running in from the rear. You've only actually got one STG, so I kind of would have been tempted to try and fight that here. But actually getting some good damage. Not going to wipe a sniper here. Wipe a sniper. Um, not going to wipe those snipers just yet, but... Uh, <coughs> nice, uh, nice try there from China Kanji. Very nice. KV-1 here does reveal itself, so, if, you know, definitely the Axis player knows the location of this uh, heavy. And he is a mere, what, 200-ish, just under 200 manpower away from getting his Tiger. I hope he doesn't reinforce these uh, Panzergrens when they run home. I kind of hope that... Oh, he's also got some uh, idle squads here. This pack gun, this mortar could probably push up. The Panzergrens, likewise, would probably be more useful heading towards the front right now. But uh, anyway... Uh, yeah, he's on 490. Like I was saying, let's see. I hope he doesn't reinforce these Panzer Grands. I hope he just kicks back for now because uh, if he pulls in the Tiger at first, that would be really... That's definitely the optimal line. Has the most impact in the least time. Soviet territory. Okay, so this MG42 probably has to yield to the KV-1. This MG42 has been here for so long, by the way. It's been doing quite well. Eight kills, two stars of veterans. He has been hosing geezers down from up in this building. He does try and pack up all the two snipers in town. This has to be a forlorn retreat, surely. I mean, the retreat comes down. Now they have to run past two marksmen. Bang, the first... Uh, and they get utterly gibbed, as we expected. So. That's going to be a squad, loss there, a squad loss there for China, who actually... I mean, look at this roster. He's so Panzergren heavy. I do like the marksman here from uh, Natanio. The longer this game goes on, the more dominant I feel like this comp this uh, composition from uh, Natanio is going to be, at least in the infantry stakes. Now, oh, uh, man, it looks like China just keeps reinforcing his squads. You do have to get the Tiger at some point for it to be any good, mate. And he's had the ability to get it for a long time. This Tiger could have been here, like, four or five minutes ago. So, um... He does have to actually save up and unlock that unit and, and, and call it in 
in order to get the benefit from having you. And I do hope that he does that soon here. Uh, Ziskan pushing forward here, exposed more to half track. Okay, yeah, he does he does give it some leeway here. And there goes a Maxim getting crushed down by mortars. Again, not the end of the world, just going to be more of a veterancy wipe than a squad wipe as these conscripts going to pick that one back up. Uh, oh my god, he just keeps reinforcing. Jesus, seriously. Just save up for a tiger, bro. I feel like you need the tiger. Uh, Lost? Uh, so what has he just lost? It's like something just got wiped. I totally missed that. What was that? Like some conscripts or something? No, no, no. It was the marksman. Oh no, the marksman. Oh god, I think they got like gibbed by a mortar here. Yeah, sorry, I was looking somewhere else on the screen, but that is definitely what happened. Gross. Oh well. Good old magpie wins forensic casting once again. I see, I see the fingerprints. There's a little hair sample over here that I was able to, you know, the DNA on these uh, dead marksmen definitely matches uh, the DNA. Um, of the missing squad that we were looking for. CSI Magpie. Um, the sector is at risk. Okay, so what was that? Those mines up here going to maim a couple of members of these uh, Panzergrand squad. They're still going to be able to stay for the cap, and finally the Tiger makes it onto the field. Better late than never. Uh, but it still is going to be an incredibly potent unit, and without doubt the Kingmaker on the field here. Just one Zis gun, really, in terms of meaningful anti-tank here for the Soviet player. I mean, of course, there are the uh, anti-tank grenades, uh, and there are also the uh, KV-1 here, which can help chip in and help damage and help police this Tiger. But, I mean, I, I feel like one Zis gun, two conscript squads, and a KV-1 does not usually a tiger beat so this tiger for sure gonna have some uh, some you know it's gonna be able to really shove the Soviet player around here I think is he gonna get the pindle mount uh, does he have the munitions oh he should have gotten the pindle mount Ooh. come on trying to can you bro you, you can tiger where do you even tiger seriously you can tiger the, the only reason that I like the pinto mount, I mean, like, it does a good amount of damage, which is very useful, but the main thing is it vets the Tiger up nice and quickly, and, like, have, you know, the Stars of Veterancy on such an impactful unit have a disproportionately large effect compared to, say, the Stars of Veterancy on, I don't know, Pioneers or something, I guess, on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, anyway, Conscript's going to move raft forward. They do break the engine because the Zisk gun round was actually successful. Now this Tiger is kind of stricken completely unsupported here in mid, unless this is an incendiary falling on these guys. Actually... Frag cluster bombing coming in, and the frag it does arrive so quickly. Here it comes! Ah! Ah! And that is a grievous, grievous attack there. And there's this gun. Ah! It's gonna go down. This tiger's still trading health to take it out. And um, wow, actually, it looks like Natanio has just seen enough at this juncture. Um, oh, that was a reasonably unexpected GG, but I mean. Only because I wasn't expecting it. If you actually look at the field, it's not. It's not, I mean, it's understandable. I feel like Natanio for sure could have fought on a bit longer if he was playing for genuine monies or something. But, I mean, he's even got 200 fuel to his name, you know? I feel like with 200 fuel to your name and moderate fuel, field control and still some fuel income, I feel for sure you can throw down a mechanized Campanile and get a, an SU-85. You know, that really helps. And then, I mean, I know he just lost a Zisk gun, but if, if you're able to recrew this one, he still has one Zisk gun. I feel like with an SU-85, that Tiger then becomes manageable as well. Do note, the Tiger is, like, crippled. Um, so it would have been out of circulation for at least a minute or so whilst the Axis player backs it up and then repairs it. I don't know. I feel like that position wasn't too untenable there for Natanio. But clearly he'd had enough. Clearly he just uh, felt like the odds were overwhelming. Um, yeah, interesting. 27 minutes, 42 seconds of uh, interesting play between two players who I would definitely say are, are without doubt good, you know. I think they both they both played um, an above-par game there. Uh, not not too many mistakes, not too many o o odd decisions. I, I have to say, though, I would question the choice of the counter-attack commander here for Natanio, struggling to see exactly how that paid for itself. I mean, he did use for Mother Russia once, uh, at least once that I saw, anyway, and it was, like... I don't know, had an effect. I'm not sure it was worth the munitions and certainly didn't justify the commander pick f for me. Um, I didn't really see him use reconnaissance overflight. Uh, I didn't really see him use shocks. Didn't really see him use the B4. And that pretty much means the only other impact that this commander had was the two KV-1s. Well, the first one was absolutely dire and a total waste of 145 fuel. Um, the second one... Uh, killed three guys. So I think it's fair to say, and you know, although it didn't die, it was pretty dire and didn't do very well. Um, 
Now, it is hard to get a KV-1 to do well when there's a Tiger on the field, and, you know, especially when there's a Pat Gun, Panzer Shrek, Panzer Grenz on the field. But then again, I mean, when by the time this unit can even come in, you've got to expect your opponent to have those tools, and this is part of the reason why I don't really like the KV-1, if I'm entirely honest. So, bit of a... That, that I have to say, this commander and the way it was employed here by Natanio, probably, it's fair to say, suboptimal. So, I... I, I mean, that's one thing I, I for sure, if I was being super critical, if I just say, look, if, you know, buddy, Natanio, you're going into game two here against China. How about just take this guy off the roster and put somebody else on? Because I, I just don't like this commander and I don't really I don't really feel like it's one of the best three Soviet commanders for sure. So anyway, from China, nice to see spearhead. I do like a good spearheading me. Uh, it's just it's just really it's just a fine commander, you know. You get a good... I mean, the mortar half-track can, can come in early and absolutely police the field. And also, having access to an incendiary call-in does give you options that you just don't normally have as a Vermac player. So, it's a nice unit to have for sure. And if you keep it alive the whole game, which China did, then it can go on to get some some reasonable... I mean, 19 kills, 2 stars of veterancy coming on for 3. For sure, not the best mortar half-track in the, in the world. But, you know, also, not a bad unit either. Definitely did well for itself. The mortar, uh, the actual GR34, also doing well. So, between these two, good indirect fire support provided that entire game for the Axis player. Uh, very useful. Uh, Pan's attack we didn't really see used. Reconnaissance overflight we didn't really see used. Now the frag bombing there was really nice. Probably caused, you know, I think that's what broke the spirit of Natanio, if you like. That frag bombing for sure prompted the GG. So useful from that point of view. And the Tiger Tank, which um, could have arrived a lot earlier and done, you know, been a lot more efficient, uh, caused a lot more damage if it had done so. But it was here, not particularly well employed, if I'm honest, by China Kanji, um, driving it out to be fighting against uh, your opponent's AT units unsupported, having its engine broken, and then being left as a liability rather than an asset never how you want your tiger to be played but uh, in this case with the help of a frag bombing run it actually was enough here for china kanji so fair enough the plan actually worked and uh, yeah uh, spearhead commander looking okay this game I, I think definitely the mortar half track um and a real asset this game though so uh, yeah, very nice play from both of these players. Always nice to uh, see two well-met players, even if they're not super well-known of, even if they're not, you know, um, in necessarily in the top 10. That was without a doubt a high-level game, so a pleasure to cast. Thank you very much to uh, China Kanji and Natanio. And this, for now, uh, concludes this video. So this will be Magpie842 signing out. Thanks for being patient over the Christmas festive period. Uh, I have been away. Sorry, just stretching. I have been away. Uh, but uh, yeah, the cast will be resuming uh this week and next week and uh yeah you'll be hearing more from me so uh yeah thanks very much for watching this for now is magpie 842 signing out he says how do you do that